Good morning. I thought we'd try a different setting this morning by the lake. Birds are singing. It's a lovely morning. Only two weeks to go before the start of the traditional June the 16th season. And I just thought I'd speak a, a bit today about the good stuff, all the good stuff that happens in fishing. And uh, with the hope that uh, all the social media and hype that goes on around a lot of other stuff that you see on the internet and on social media, um, you can just put that to one side and we'll concentrate on what really matters. I'm not saying that what you see on the internet isn't good. Some is and some isn't, but there's a lot of hype attached to it. And I'd like to try and dispel a little bit of that hype today. And uh, one of the things I'd like to discuss, for example, is uh, hook baits, flavors, my favorite subject. And I'd like to speak about baiting up. Do you need to? Is it necessary? I'd like to speak about a new flavor that's coming out, which I'll probably do down by the river. And one of the things that I think is most important of all is just going fishing. Rather than getting into the habit that sometimes happens where we just go through a kind of routine and that routine just becomes almost like a, a camping habit. I think we should think about going fishing, taking less gear with us, being a little bit more mobile if we can, reading the water a bit better and taking time to look at the water if you can do it, if time allows, and finding the fish first. And if you find the fish first, and you've got a good bait, and you've got a good tactic, you should catch them quite quickly. They're only carp. They eat pretty much anything. And the whole point of bait is that it should act as a catalyst for getting a quick bite. And that's the only reason I got into it. The only reason I ever came into carp baits and got interested in it for my own use was because I wanted to spend the minimum amount of time fishing for the maximum result and you can do that so we'll carry on with that in a minute because at the moment sitting out here the planes are coming over so we'll just switch off for a second quite a few people are sending me emails I'm getting lots of emails and inquiries about people making their own base mix which is fine designing it and then using it very often incorporating my flavors which is very nice and thank you for that um, I want to actually say to all the people that email me and for the continuance of these YouTube clips that I will promise to continue to deliver excellence, to not compromise and to make sure that everything I do is of the highest possible standard. There are a few changes you usually brought about by the fact that supply chain difficulties with ingredients can make, mean that some of the stuff has gone up a bit in price, but there's nothing I can do about that. Um, so I try and provide no compromise on the recipes, no compromise on the flavors, um, because I would rather make better bait, in, improve the recipes at the expense of charging a little bit more. Um, you can't beat that. Um, whereas people potentially might want to cut a few corners because of the cost, I won't do that. So rest assured, everything is the same as usual or better. And that's my mantra. I will make bait better and the best I possibly can. So what else can we talk about that's important? The list is pretty big. And I would say that the bulk of the emails that I get are for people that are making their own hook baits, maybe using my ingredients, maybe using somebody else's, but they're wanting to add more and more extras to it. Please don't do this, everybody. Please stick to the dose rate sheet on the, on the website, stick to the recipes, and remember that less is best. I'm gonna tell you a quick story about this. Two weeks ago, I was in France. I went with a good French friend of mine, Frank Banovich. And Frank's uh, a very good angler. He's got plenty of lakes to go out in France and test everything. And he's made uh, a fantastic base mix. Together we've worked on it. The base mix ingredients are very good. It contains lots of natural extracts. And he doesn't use any flavor at all. Well, he does, 
But in the trip last week, he didn't put any flavour in his bait. He just used a very subtle amount of spice. And it, it's not a flavour, it was a powdered spice that he just put in himself. And so the, the, the bait itself had no flavour. Now think about that. Who would go to France using, or who would fish anywhere using a bait that has no liquid additives, no extracts, no oils, no flavours, just eggs and the powder base mix. He caught a lot of fish whilst he was there. He got bites immediately. There's two reasons why Frank, well it's more than two reasons, there's several reasons why um, we did well that week and Frank did particularly well. And that's because his bait was good. The ingredients were good, they were fresh and everything about the bait meant instant attraction. So I believe in nutritional recognition and I'm going to tell you something which some won't believe. Another bit of good stuff here. In my opinion it takes carp only seconds, certainly minutes, to evaluate a foodstuff, a bait. If they can take it into the pocket in the roof of their mouth where most of the taste buds are, they can evaluate that much quicker. And I've mentioned this before, but that means fishing with a slightly longer link will mean that they can take the bait further inside their mouth. And using a low flavor level and a very good base mix means that those fish will recognize nutritionally that it's something they want to eat. They will take the boily further back into their mouth, which means that you get better hook holds. Why? Because you're catching those fish on acceptance, not on ejection. And a lot of bolt rigs and hair rigs that are used today, you are catching the fish, not because of the rig, but in spite of the rig. Because the fish are taking in the boilie, they think they want to eat it, they want to evaluate it inside their mouth where most of the taste buds are, it's over flavored, it's too strong, and the link is very short. They blow the bait out, by luck, the sharp hook catches them on the edge of the lip and you've got a hooked fish. But very often, with short rigs and over flavoured bait, you lose fish. And you lose fish from the hook falling out because it's not a good hook hold. Just think about that a little bit. So, think about nutrition. Think about using real food baits, not generic preserved pop-ups that have sat on a shelf for some time before they've gone into your bag and you've tied them to a self-hooking rig and waited and waited and waited for a bite. I don't want my customers or you guys to wait for a bite. I expect you to use a bait that's got the right level of flavor in it in the first place so that you can cast out to a feeding fish if you see one and catch a, get a bite straight away. This is what should happen. This is using real bait. If you put a couple of grains of sweet corn on, or a bunch of maggots, or a worm, or even a piece of luncheon meat, and you cast that out to a rolling feeding fish, you'd expect to bite quite quickly. What you are unlikely to expect to get is when you glug, dip, or soak a inert hook bait made with silicon so it pops up or some rock hard bait that's, you know, made specifically as a hook bait that's been cooked and cooked and rock hard, then it's been soaked. The fish is gonna come across this bait, which is gonna be the same as everybody else's. That's controversial, but think about what I've said. Try and avoid glugging and dipping your bait. Try and use real food and try and get the hook bait level and the flavour level right in the first place. Even if you use a minimal amount of bait, it doesn't matter. You don't need lots of bait to catch fish if it's good bait. And I will keep saying that until I'm in my box. Um, it, because I've proved it works. We'll finish off this little story with what happened at the end of two weeks ago when we fished this lake in France. Um, never fished the lake before. It's a lake where you have to pay for a week's fishing. This particular lake was owned by a French couple. 
it was about uh, 20 acres and um, quite shallow, six feet deep all over. The fish were beginning to spawn, but they weren't spawning, which is a good thing. They were grouping up a little bit and they were mostly down one end of the lake. So the bites were coming at uh, three to five o'clock in the morning. That was the feeding spell. It was a chilly week, weather was cold, not like it is now. And uh, the three of us, there were three people fishing, two French friends of mine and myself, and uh, we fished for five nights. And let me tell you that we had about 35 fish using bait that that lake had never seen before for the whole week in France, that whole week's holiday, uh, six days, five nights, I took six kilos of bait with me. That's all I took. All that time in France, no pellets, no particles, no ground bait, six kilos. I calculated I would need no more for this particular lake than about a kilo a day, and I only fish with two rods. I didn't want to use three rods because I didn't want all the lines in the water. Uh, Frank and his friend fished a similar tactic, and uh, we had 35 fish for the week, and the, the uh, two or three French people that, that were fishing on the opposite bank fished for the whole week, and they had four fish. They were using bucketfuls of particles, bucketfuls putting in at least five or six kilos every night using a bait boat, every night using a rowing boat, taking their bait out, rowing their rigs out and fishing over big beds of particles. We didn't use a bait boat, we didn't use a rowing boat, we just used throwing sticks or catapults. Very light scattering of bait, keeping the bait trickling in when the fish were feeding or just before and then nothing more. So there's a tactic that works, and it works, providing you use good bait. So we'll finish off with me sitting on this bridge on this lovely morning. There's a lot of information in what I've just said. Some of it you could regard as a little bit controversial, and I appreciate that I might be a little bit self-opinionated. Um, but hey, uh, after 50 years of fiddling around with bait, tackle, rigs and catching lots of carp, I would much rather pass on some of that knowledge to you guys and hopefully you can pick up on some of the things that I've done. And you know what? You can look at some of the YouTube clips, some of the podcasts, you can look at all sorts of stuff that crops up on Facebook and Instagram with people telling you about this rig, that rig, and that bait. And yeah, look. A lot of it works and I will never criticise the efforts that other people go to in promoting themselves and promoting their own products. Um, my preference now is more to help people than it is to sell bait. I don't really need to sell bait for a living but I get a great deal of pleasure out of people emailing me and saying by the way John I've just caught this 40, I've just caught this lovely 20, whatever it is. And you know you can go complicated about water temperature, thermal stratification, thermocline. But the most important thing is watching the water, fishing, going fishing, and being a real angler. Are you a real angler? Ask yourself that question. Are you just going through the motions? Or are you a real angler? There are things that you can do, even on busy waters, that will improve your chances. And you need to think about perhaps doing at least five or six things differently than those which other people are doing in order to catch a fish. Are you doing the same thing as other people are doing? Or are you doing something different? Be different and you'll catch a few more fish. We'll close off now and we'll move locations. See you later.
Okay, so we've nipped down by the river. It's two weeks before the beginning of the season. There will be a few people who are thinking about facing up, thinking about starting their campaign for Barbel. Although, probably later in the season, it's a bit better for Barbel, uh, more towards October. Um, but the same conditions will still apply. Think about how Barb will move up and down the river. And what you'll find is that they tend to move in central areas. They, they have a little motorway going up and down the middle of the river. And so if you've got a handful of bait, even on a small river like this, if you're baiting up, don't throw the bait across the current. Throw the bait in a line in the central part of the river. If the water's clear and you can spend some time watching the fish, see how they move up and down the river. See what direction they take and what pathway they take. And you'll find that it will be different on every section of river. So where you've got something in the middle of the river, where the barb will move to and where you can bait in a line, on another part of the river, they might come right down in the edge and that's their pathway from under the snags. Another quick tip is if you're thinking of baiting up on any bit of river, try and bait up away from the snags. So try and bait an area upstream of the snags so that when you put your chop arts, boilies, whatever it is in the river, the smell goes down to the snags where the fish live and pulls them up towards you. Um, there's another thing I'd like to mention as well, um, and that's over and above the noise of these planes, um, a flavor that I've brought back. So I've brought this flavour back, I've got it with me, here it is, Barbel Search 4. This is a new version of what I used to do a few years ago and people keep asking me for it. This particular flavour is in a 50ml bottle, it's a meat extract, it's got salami, smoked salami, spices and extracts in it. It's a complicated blend of four different compounds with an overall aroma component in it of at least 40 different aroma compounds. We've been using this off and on for quite some time so we've, it's been tested for several years but the principle of the original Barbel Search 4 is in this flavour. So it's going to be out in the next few days, 50 ml, 12 99 so I've listened to what everybody said and you'll find a few of my flavours on the site being sold in smaller bottles. You don't need much, and this will work coating on meat. You can put it on maggots, you can put it a light glaze on pellets, very light. And the dose rate for this would be to one large egg up to one mil maximum. If you're making a paste with one large egg, perhaps using, say, Taste, Taste F2 base mix, which is a brilliant barbel bait, or maybe bio shellfish, um, I would say a paste, one egg, half a mil of this. That's half of one mil. It's strong, you don't need much, and as I mentioned earlier, less is best, particularly if you're fishing regularly. Regular fishing on one stretch, if you put a lot of flavour in your bait, be it for barbel or carp, and this works for carp too, you'll find that the more flavour you use and the more frequently you go with a strongly flavoured bait, the quicker it will blow. So yes, flavour will act as a catalyst for the bait, but it should be a unique label for you and your style of fishing. So think about how you fish, the frequency with which you fish, and the type of bait you're making. Keep a note of the recipes you make, stick to the same base mix, and you can vary the flavours yourself. Less flavour in paste, and a fixed dose rate if you're making chop ups or boilers. Remember that line, Bait in a line, away from the snags, upstream of the snags. Try and find a spot which you think isn't fish match, where the bank is not tr trodden down. And consider, particularly with barbel fishing, consider, if you can, fishing in the mornings. Why? Because 90% of barbel anglers fish in that, that couple of hours after dark, you know, the after work session the evening session where you fish up to say 10 o'clock in the evening or later in the summer, but that's when everyone else does. So a good time to barbel fish on busy stretches is in the morning, very early. You only need a couple of hours on the river, 
fish won't be expecting anglers to be there as long as you can get up in the morning. So try that one. We'll cut this now. Um, it's a lovely sunny morning. We're going to go back for a coffee and I'll see you back in the bait shed. See you later. Okay, so we're back in the bait workshop. Got all these lovely flavors and various things here. And uh, the first question I want to address is something I mentioned earlier on, which is about uh, keeping baits fresh and using them fresh. So obviously I don't like using preserved bait. So my choice is to make it fresh or freeze it. But there's something else you can do. Even in the summertime, and if you've got a cool box, you can keep freshly made bait, bait that you've made at home or perhaps somewhere that you've, has rolled it for you, you can keep that fresh for five or six days in a fridge or in a cool box. So even if you're going to France, going on holiday or fishing on a long session, it, let's say you make the bait on a Thursday, dry it overnight and bag it up, put it in the fridge, and it's nice and cool when you go fishing or when you, you know, jump on the tunnel and go to France. If you keep that cool and it's been in the fridge for about 12 hours and you keep it low and cool, it won't go off for a good five to six days, provided you keep it cool. You can just take what you want. That means you've never frozen the bait, a big edge, fresh bait, not even frozen. So think about that. If you've got um, a vacuum sealer, that also helps. You can vacuum seal your boilers in plastic bags and put them in the fridge. That keeps longer. But certainly if you're in a controlled environment, some boilers will keep fresh for seven full days, seven or even eight full days without freezing them. But they do have to be kept very cool, very cool. Um, I do get asked that question quite a lot. So it's important that everybody remembers that one. Um, another thing I think we mentioned both on the river and at the lake and about using good quality bait. So that's real food baits, something with a proper nutritional value, not too strong, not too many additives. And that's how much bait to use. And I mentioned that I've been to France for five or six days fishing and I've only taken six, I took about six and a half kilos of bait with me. And that's all I use. Very light baiting because Hey, you know, can't know what boilies are. You turn up at a lake for a weekend's fishing or go to France for a week's fishing. And if it's good bait, they'll be on it straight away. You don't need to get them on it. That expression, I want to get the fish on my bait. It isn't necessarily that one single bait that needs to be established. It's the area of the lake or the river that those fish frequent. And when they find a decent bait, they only need to eat half a dozen pieces to understand and know instinctively that it's doing them good. And this is the message I'd like to try and get across. If you're using good bait, you don't need much. So whereas some people think, oh, I'm taking 30 kilos of bait with me for the week, and I'm gonna put in one kilo on each rod every day, there's a, you know, there's, there's a minimum and plus some spare. So three kilos a day, three rods, seven days, 21 kilos for a week. I've never used that. You don't need that, even using four rods. And you know what? I tend not to use three or four rods either. What I tend to do, even in the UK, is I'll use two rods and I'll keep one even if you are allowed to use three, I'll keep one rod baited up to one side, you know, all balanced and ready to go. And then if I see a fish roll, I'll cast to that rolling fish with the rod that I've prepped and it's ready to go, with a nutritional body on it and a low flavour level. So it's acceptable instantly the minute it goes in the water. It's not over flavoured and it's not glugged. I've got the recipe right in the bait workshop or in my kitchen from day one. And don't forget, there's a PDF of the dose rate sheet. And if you're blending flavors, let's say for example, a good blend would be this lovely Alicillar, together with a classic combination of plum or peach. So Alicillar, plum and peach in bio shellfish, one of the best recipes I think I've ever used, and it's by far my most popular selling 
baked. So the peach comes in 50 ml bottles and um, 100 ml bottles. And there are a few smaller bottles here in the range. So I do one called Fruit Boost. There's some essential oils, bun spice. That's a lovely blend of seven essential oils. That's in a small bottle. Um, there's, there's, there's various here in the range. And when you look at all these and you think, sometimes bait companies suddenly spring up. They might be in the UK and they might be in France. And they've suddenly bring out a range of bait. Has it been tested? Think about that one. You should be testing a bait, both the base mix, the recipe and the flavour for at least a minimum of a year, but ideally over two seasons to get the levels right and to get the base mix right. So I would just say all these have had rigorous testing, some of them over 30 years. And it's the feedback that I've got from lots of customers where they said, oh, John, I've tried this mix or that mix or my own mix. And it seems to work better with one mil of caramel banana and one mil of plum to six eggs. That's just two mil of flavour to six eggs. So I would urge that when using these flavours, which are very strong, even when it comes down to using this, which I've brought back again because I keep being asked for it, particle punch. This is, this is the go-to sweet, mapley, natural sugars to put in particles, tiger nuts, maples, anything you like. Party blend, spog mix, that's a good additive, but you don't need much. So to every, key, every litre of water that you put in, you only need to put 20 mil of that in. So in a 500 mil bottle, there's enough to make a, a lot of particles up. You dissolve that in the water, soak your particles, bring them to the boil and leave it in the same water after it's cooled down, take it to the lake in the same water. And I can go through these because, you know, I'm that enthusiastic about this because I know it works. Don't forget the liquid yeast complex, prebiotics, lovely taste, aids digestion for carp, a good additive. And obviously the shrimp is now tried and tested. It's been out for about three years four years and the shrimp extract comes in two different sizes and all these other flavors and additive you can mix them all together to create your own exclusive label and I just want to speak to you about that because making your own bait and doing your own thing is something that I've been on about for a long time and look at these I found these in a cupboard these are two old brochures from the very early 90s and I'm going to read you something on here because earlier on I mentioned something about social media, which and you know how I feel about that. And I've never asked people to publicize their catches. I've always said, you want to keep it quiet? That's fine with me. I don't need field testers. Why? Because I've got lots of friends and they do it for me. But I'm going to read you something from one of these. I think it's in this one. Yes, it is. So here's the brochure. Here's of much younger me. And to get my point across about wanting people to go fishing, go back to traditional activities, think about what they're doing and keep it quiet, I'll read you this. So I've put a special note here towards a winning formula. Anglers often go to considerable lengths to keep their successful bait a secret. I agree with this policy and do not expect my customers to publicize their catches unless they wish to. My aim is to supply those anglers who are quietly catching fish on my products and may also, and they also want to keep it that way. That's a traditional opinion and a traditional view. But when I first came into carp fishing, it was a privilege to be involved in it. And we used to go about our business carp fishing in an understated and quiet way. And it was never a problem. So I'll just leave you with those thoughts. I think actually having re-looked really at my notes, 
um, that we've pretty much covered in this clip, which, and I haven't done a clip for a good three months, um, we've pretty much covered everything. Uh, there is a couple of final things I would like to say. I mentioned on the river something about this little beauty, Barbel Search 4. I've put a lot of thought into this and I've made it myself. These five litres ready to bottle up. It's a pretty pungent flavour and all the additives and flavour and aroma compounds that I put into this they're so complex I can't begin to tell you and let me tell you that this will work so well in the taste base mix that's taste f2 which is a savory mix it's not a fish meal but it will work equally well in bio shellfish or your own mix that you make yourself um, it's it's oil based and again the profile just to recap is like a smoked spicy salami meaty with a little bit of savory profile and a little touch of ocean protein. There's a little touch of seafood in there, but not much. So pretty unique. And the blend itself, I've used in carp bait and barbel bait, and they love it. Actually, chub like it too. So they're all cyprinoids, so that they're all gonna like a similar profile additive. Uh, again, reminder, when it comes to using these flavors, in paste, less flavor, in boilies or chop ups, the standard dose, which for this, for barbel, you can get away with a bit more flavour, up to one mil, up to a maximum of one mil per egg, but ideally half a mil is good. When it comes to carp bait, two mil to six eggs for boilies and freebies is fine. So we'll pretty much finish up on that. I'm very pleased that. Um, I found these old brochures to show you. Look at that lovely picture of the barber and carp on there. I love doing this and I'm not going to let you guys down. I'm going to continue researching. I'm doing it all the time. I have a very special new flavour that we're testing over this summer. It's already been used for about a month. Um, it's a complex cream type flavour. So watch this space. It'll be the first time I've produced my own exclusive super strong cream concentrate for 30 years. And I've invested a great deal of money in it. Just to tell you finally about these flavors. People ask about the quality of these flavors and how I achieve it. Well, you know, I achieve it with help. You can't do this on your own. So I have had a lot of help in making these formulations and I'm very lucky that I do know a professor of flavours and I also know a very clever chemist and between us all we, we get this right. So I know where to start with the flavour profile, I know what ingredients should go in it and I get professional help to get the balance right. Then it's made in a laboratory to my specification. So uniquely I own 95% of the recipes of all these flavours, the actual recipes themselves. So I will take a flavour and I will take it to the laboratory and I will have it made to my recipe, to my profile. Almost impossible to copy and very strong. So these are designed for bait. They are not recommended to bait companies by a flavour company because that's what's on their shelves. So I'll emphasise that because I put my life's work into it. Go fishing, be careful about using these when you're mixing them together. Good luck for the season. It's starting in two weeks time. Thanks for your support. Subscribe if you can to this clip because it helps and I'll see you later.